Hi everyone, it's so great to be back again this week and what a week it has been. Oh my goodness, we had a heat wave on the weekend with both Saturday and Sunday hitting around 40 degrees Celsius. And you know what? The garden coped really well with it. I got out early both days, gave everything a really good water and that just helped the plants get through the day. Now I know I said to you last week that I was hoping to do a garden harvest today. There was a lot of things growing here, fruit and vegetables, that look like they'd be ready at this stage, but they aren't quite yet. So hopefully now, next week or the week after, that's when you'll see them being harvested. But you know what? There's a lot more going on in the garden. So let's go and take a look at it all now starting off with some of those lilies that have opened up over the last few days. As well as having those lilies beginning to flower down here in the fan garden, there are a few more blooms to show you. It's only the very start, but it's so nice to see the first couple of zinnia flowers opening up. I put a lot more plants in this area, so I filled the rest of the space up with some more zinnia seedlings. In the bed beside that one, I have completely planted it up now. I had shown you this last week where I had put some tomato plants at the back, amaranth and asters. Since then, I have filled out the rest of the bed with lots of little seedlings. There's some cosmos, more straw flowers. These are an orange flowering variety. All along this side are some snapdragons. How bad is this? I can't remember what these ones are. Ah oh well, they'll just be a surprise. I was just in that area, which is the fan garden. I want to give you a bit of an idea where everything is here in our backyard. So this section, is just underneath our orange tree which the fruit are really small at the moment you may remember this is where i had all of the russian red kale the nasturtium plants which i had originally planted under the orange tree were also growing in this area they were really starting to encroach the space and i just ended up giving them a good trim back making room for all of these new plants I removed all of the kale plants and I came in here with wheelbarrow loads of compost and manures to amend the soil. I put a nice thick layer on top which will feed all of these plants over the coming months. If you can imagine this is my vision for this area. So at the very back I put in a whole row of amaranths and the hoppy red dye that will form a bit of a screen or a backdrop for this area because they do get quite tall. And then you can see these three plants just here. They're another variety of amaranth called hot biscuit. Then in front of those plants, this will be a section of celosia, which is the Kramer's rose. Over here are a whole load of zinnias. And then behind this snapdragon, and the bronze fennel, I have some more little zinnia seedlings. I haven't tried these combination of plants all together, but I'm hoping that it will look good, cheerful and really colourful. And I just adore lots of colour here during summertime. You may remember that I had planted a couple of months ago a whole row of the African marigolds along here. Well, unfortunately, they got eaten by the slugs and snails. However, I do have about five backup plants in my little makeshift nursery, which I will pop in there too. I'm just standing in the opposite direction now. So I was just over there because I want to take a look at what's happening in this little bed. The salvia tricolor is beginning to bloom. My friend Hannah put me on to this annual salvia a couple of years ago, and I'm telling you, it's so easy to grow from seed. You can see that the blooms are come in different colors, whites, purples, and pinks. The dwarf marigolds, which I put in here, are starting to flower. 
just behind those plants in this little section which is getting narrower by the day I had put in some globe amaranth also called gomfrias but they are gone and um, a couple of reasons again the slugs and snails and also because of this perennial basil here it has gone crazy and um, I have already trimmed it back um, not too long ago and it's just taken off again so this weekend I'm going to give it another huge haircut the bees really do love it though and it has been flowering all through our winter time really providing them with lots of food wait until you see what's in here the first sunflower I still remember how amazed I was when I found out that this isn't just one big flower head here it's actually made up of lots of little tiny flowers these are the ornamental tobacco plants their flowers are so long like little trumpets the shasta daisies are starting to bloom i want to cut a few of these flowers off and see how long they will last in a vase and i just spotted the first canary yellow zinnia it's getting really hard to walk in this little section without trampling on any plants because they have just filled out every space available. This one down here is the globe artichoke and it just reminds me something I forgot to show you last week. The cardoon plant, it's now flowering. Let's go over there and check it out. Then we'll come back here to the raised garden bed area where I want to show you a couple of beds that I've cleared and filled out with fresh new plants. Here are the cardoon plants. A lot of them are flowering now but I really can't appreciate them because they're so high up off the ground. I have shared with you before with the globe artichokes which are a cultivated form of these cardoons. They actually um, look amazing when flowering so I don't actually harvest them um, to eat their flower buds. I just leave them in the garden to appreciate their beautiful blooms. But I'm thinking because I can't really see these as I walk around the garden, I may actually just harvest some of these to eat. Because like artichokes, I can actually harvest these flower buds, open them up and eat the hearts inside. And on the opposite side of these cardoon plants, across on the other part of the archway, beside these lovely glass gem corn plants, the Verbena bonariensis is beginning to flower. And look what else I found beside that bed in the strawberry patch. A delicious, ready to eat strawberry. Let's head over now to the raised garden bed area. I just spotted these penstemon flowers peeking through all of these shrubs. One of them being this plumbago, which starts to flower around this time of year, just before Christmas. The dill plants at the entryway are falling over from their own weight. Plus, with the soaking we got, I guess that doesn't really help too. Um, I might end up just putting a stake in there just to give them a bit more support. Or, you know what, I could just leave them the way they are, because then at least I get to see all their flowers from um, this area. So the two beds that I cleared out are ones down here at the back. Here's the first one. So this is where I had the foxgloves, the silver beet, and now I've just put in some flowers. So that's another zinnia, another cosmos, and then there's a few capsigans in here too. Those both are capsigans, and this one here is a chili plant. Just behind that bed, this one, is a bit of a mix match of plants. So I ended up putting a mullen in here because I wasn't really sure where to put it. So I thought, you know, I'll just fit it in, in between some tomato plants. So that's a money maker. And this one here is, let me just check the tag. There we go, Burnley Bounty. Beside them at the edge of this garden bed, I put in a couple of nasturtium plants which will eventually grow up and start to spill over the edge. 
This one here is a dahlia from last year. I have the um, little dwarf tomato plant. I did say I was going to put them in a pot, but I ended up putting one in here. I may still put another one in a pot. And yeah, that's it. That's all I managed to fit into this little space. I really feel like I'm getting on top of things here now when it comes to planting, not when it comes to weeding because the place is a mess and tidying up. But at least I've got my plants in, ready to go. I only have one more bed to fill, which is this one here at the front entryway. I'm probably going to put some flowers in there, but you know, my plans always change. I don't really, I don't think I really have proper plans, but I thought, you know, putting some bright, colourful flowers in there would look really attractive as you're standing out the entrance looking into this area of the garden. Well, I think it's about time for me to head off. Um, thanks so much for watching this week's garden update. I hope you all have a lovely week and I'll see you all again next Friday. Mm -hmm.